sorry about the lateness. I <laughs> thought that I had scheduled this for 1030 and not 10 a.m. So sorry about the wait. Thanks, Devin, for messaging me and asking me if I was going live. Um, another uh, YouTube friend of mine. <laughs> um, another YouTube friend of mine asked me if I was still going live. And that's when I realized, oops, I guess I had the wrong time. I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay, so, so when you can hear me and see me, please let me know in the comments, and uh, we can get this started. Hi, Molly. How are you doing? I totally forgot I was going live at 10. 10. I thought I scheduled it for 1030. I was like, oh, I'm going to take my time. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to take my time and, and finish my cup of coffee. Before. Hmm. All right. Okay. Hello, Molly. Good job. Hi, Allie. So, for those of you that don't know, I released a book today. I, it's exciting. I um, set up my ebook for pre orders um, like two weeks ago, I think. I got five pre orders, which was excellent. Heck, I would have been pleased if just one person bought my book that I didn't know. So, my husband wanted to buy my book, but I told him he couldn't because I wanted people that were not in this household to buy my book. But, okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. Just a little rattle today. You know, thinking I had an extra. 15 minutes, and then I didn't. <laughs> awesome. So right now my book is available on Amazon and paperback and Kindle, like a Kindle edition. But then also it is let me see here. It is available through, I um, use Drop to Digital to do a wide, wide release of my ebook other than Amazon. And um, it's through iBooks, Kobo, Scribd. Oh, what are all the places is going to be available? Let me take a look here. All right, so right now you can get it through um, Kobo, Apple, iBooks, um, Scribd. And then a couple of um, places that are uh, international. Like I looked up a couple of them. What you, one's available in Italy. And then another one's available in Germany. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I thought, if anyone doesn't know, I thought I'd show you my proof copy, which is this right here. My proof copy is does not look anything like my actual book that you will that you will receive if you buy paperback. This is not even the cover of the ebook. After I got it and got the proof copy and changed some stuff on the inside, I decided. I want a little bit smaller book size, and then I also wanted a different cover. <sighs> Hi, Natalie. How you doing? Thanks. 
thanks, Natalie, for reminding me um, about <laughs> my asking if I was still going, going live because I honestly thought that I had more time. Oh, it's fine, right? I'm here. That's all that matters, right? I'm finally here. Thanks. Making the like the blurb of the book what it's gonna be about on Amazon for like the retailers or even on the back of the book. I think it took heart longer and it was harder than me writing the first chapter of the book. You know, you wanna uh, create enough interest in your book, but you also don't want to give it totally away. Like you don't want to give them the whole like plot twist. Not really. At least I don't think I would. I'm hoping I didn't. But we'll see. Wow. That. It's oddly similar. <laughs> so. Wow. That. That's a long time that you haven't seen your your dad. Okay, so I thought I'd just chit chat about my book, uh, maybe talk about the process a little bit, maybe do some sprinting. If anybody wants to hop on with me, maybe, you know, me not just talking to myself. Um, I feel like I'm talking to myself because of the lag time of StreamYard, that's why. So, um, a few people have asked me how long it took me to write my book. Hold on one second, please. Sorry, I had to manage the kids today, too. Raised by a single mom to become a single mom. Oh, no, thanks. You're not camera worthy. We're just going to chat today. Got a lot of work. All right. All right. That's fine. Okay. So, um, let me talk about my book a little bit and then we can do a sprint, I guess. If any questions, pop them up in the chat and I can answer them. Hannah, I made that binder down there. Okay. So, Love listening while you work. Well, then I'll make sure I'm extra chatty for you while you work. Allie says that she sounds like the nanny when she's recorded. Yeah, my voice is totally different too. When, from what I think I sound like. 
All right, so I'll be right back one more time. Okay, so I've been asked about how long it took me to write this book. So when I was 17, 19, probably like 19 years old, I thought of the name of the book and I thought of what the book was going to be about. It ruminated in my head for a while. I wrote like the beginning of the book a couple times for like a, a assignment in high school, an assignment in one of my writing classes in college. And then I put it away and find it and work on a little bit and put it away. And then one day my current husband um, saw it or I showed it to him. He's like, oh, you should write that. I'm like, okay. But I didn't. And then uh, probably like three years down the line, about three years after we got married, because this May was our three-year anniversary. Yeah. So in, in December, I quit my current, my latest job. It was a night audit hotel thing. So when I quit the job and then I said, well, I'm going to look for a new job, a new job after the holidays. And he was like, well, why don't you just stay home with the kids and, you know, do the homeschool, homeschool them and you can work on your book. I'm like, are you sure? And he said, well, yeah. And he, he has a couple of different part-time jobs, like very part-time jobs. He only works like 16 to 20 hours a week because he's on disability. So he only works so much. And so I was like, okay. So then January, like Jan that was in January. In February, I, um, I wrote some more of the book, the beginning of it, and then I put it away. And then April, and then in April, I think it was. Uh, yeah, April, I, April or May, something like that. I forget. I, um, I had looked at it and I decided that I didn't want to write the book anymore in third person point of view, third person past tense point of view. I wanted to read it first person point of view. I'm glad that you could show up. Hi. I'm just going through a little bit about um, the process of me writing a book. You cannot be by your sister if you cannot stop touching her. So do something else. You're not on the couch. The couch is Hannah's spot. Either on the bed with your other sister or at the kitchen table. What are you going to do? Good. Then you do that. Okay. I'm so happy everyone's greeting everyone else in here. That's great. Okay. So, back to where I was. So, then I decided to take my book that I had written the first, um, the first, like, I had 5,000 words written in third person point of view. And I spent like two weeks of just changing everything to first person past tense. So going from third person to first person, it was a lot. It was very draining on my brain, very time consuming. Um, but in the end, I'm glad that I went that way. 
because I wanted I wanted the um, book to be centered around one person instead of around a whole group of people, if that makes sense. What's amazing is, so when I completed the rough draft in like April, I think it was, I had my husband print it out for me at his job. Um, print out for me at his job and show you the cover page of it. They look 37,397 words. And my finished product of my book is like just around 56,000 words. So not only did I add things and change things after about, oh, I don't know, 15 different um, rough drafts. There's never a good time to go live when you have kids in the house. There just isn't. It's fine. Anyway, so it's so interesting. I really wanted to keep the first one, the first rough draft I printed out, because I like to see how I changed it. In fact, there is like a prologue that I was going to include into the first chapter. But I ended up not um, including that at all, that scene at all. And um, then my first chapter that I have in my rough draft is actually, I think, chapter two or maybe chapter three. I'm not sure. But there is a good chunk of stuff that I added before the chapter one that's in here. And then... Like... I um the way the book in is ending now that um you that you can buy now um right the choice of parenthood um that you can buy now the uh ending of it is different than the one the first rough draft I mean the first rough drafts ending is included in the book but I added a whole nother chapter in addition to that so I like looking at it see how it's changed I'm gonna keep a hold of it. I mean, even my proof copy has changed a lot from the copy that you guys can get. Like, my picture's different on the back. I don't have a um, little bio information about me on the back of it. Instead, now it's an about the author page at the back of the book. And then, like, the size of the book is different. The title page it has different font. There's no table of contents in the paperback book because it's a fiction book and the titles aren't um, titled, so I didn't do that. Okay. I don't have anything else for you to read. Unless you want to read this. No? It's it's by a really cool author. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I feel like as a parent, I have like 22 computer tabs open my brain. And then every once in a while, everything freezes. And then I don't know where I went. So I do, <laughs> um, let's see. okay, um, let's see here. So that things have changed and it wasn't until like about a month ago that I realized that that prologue scene 
was not anywhere in my finished product, which was interesting to see what made the cut and what didn't make the cut, so to speak. And it wasn't even like a um, conscious decision to say, hey, let's take out this part. I had every intention, including the prologue that I had in the beginning, to be um, on to be on a be, be in the book. For some reason, I decided not to do it. I'm not sure why. Not sure why. Maybe I'll use it. <sighs> um, leave the door open and the cat will come out on its own, okay? Okay, does anybody have any questions for me about anything? Book related, care related, crazy life related. I'm taking a drink of my coffee. It's actually still warm, so I'm going doing good today. Usually it's cold by the time I take us my second drink. So the main character, in the beginning of the book, she's nine. At the end of the book, she is... She is 16 and in 10th grade. Oh, how do you? Oh, thanks, Bonnie. Thanks for showing up. Thanks. Thank you. I'm so happy when people show up to my streams. Um, I don't know. Jackson, come here. I'm going to ask them. How do I ask them? Ask each one of them. Illy and Hannah, come here. Hold on. Let's just ask. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this question to them personally. Jackson, how do you feel about me being a writer? Good. You say good. Okay. Seven year old voice is good. Ileana, how do you feel about mom being a writer? It's just okay. Why is it only okay? Huh? <laughs> hey. How about you, Hannah? What do you think? think it's pretty cool. Okay, we got good. We got okay. Because getting cat is more awesome than me being a writer. And then my oldest daughter says it's pretty cool. So. Oh my gosh, the names. No, that's it, Jackson. You can go away. Hannah, don't. Put the cat down. Put the cat down. Put the cat down. Okay, how did I choose the names? The names was the hardest part. So when I wrote the book, I just put everyone's, I just put people's names in there that I, that were in my family or whatever, just to, so, because it's easier for me, I just put in people's names. But then I don't, but then when I, I as like placeholder names, but then when I needed to actually change all the names, that was hard. For example, Okay. For example, um, for some of them, I ask people's opinion, like, um, the book takes place, the majority of the book takes place on the Oregon coast. So, you know, and in the 90s, 80s to 90s. So very, not very like um, buried in the type of people that were living there. So I said to my friend, I need three names for white, blonde hair, blue eyed girls that could be sisters. And they're all born pretty close together. So that's how I came up with three of the names there. Um, and then I thought of uh, friends of mine that had names. And then I just picked names that 
looked, I went through like a list of names and baby books and online and I picked different names. Like there's three sisters and they're very white, blonde hair, blue eyed. Their names are like Ashley, Michelle, and Stacy. Like very <laughs> white girl names. Um, and then I think I, I did their last name like McGregor or something like that. Um, and then... Like the other characters, the other people in there, I just, it was hard. I would, honestly, some of the names I came up with on my own, but the other names I would ask opinions. And then um, the one of the villains in the book, I asked my longtime friend, I was like, um, what is like a good um, name that would be for like, a villain guy but like a white guy and so my friend was like Stan I'm like all right I like that name so I went with Stan and then um I needed a last name so after a few weeks I was like what is the last name of this person in this family because this villain in there is uh is related to a bunch of people in the, in the story so then I was like hmm what do I do so I asked the same friend and so that friend thought the name Cooley so that's how I came up with Stan Cooley. Um, the three siblings. Um, one of the siblings is um, I got a middle name of one of us in the family. Um, and then the main character is named Bethany. And how I came up with Bethany is that when I would work at the call center, I would say, my name is Stephanie. They always, they always say Bethany. And I always thought that was a nice name. So that's how I came up with that name. But naming was really hard. And I think what I'm going to do next, when I write my next book, I'm just going to, instead of saying like placeholder name or like a couple of letters and like highlighting every time I come up with a name or writing MC or like bad guy or dad or whatever, I'm actually going to not move forward until I get to that name or until I decide on that name. I think it'd be easier in the long run. Well, I didn't grow up in the eighties, but well, I guess I kind of did. Um, I was born in the eighties. So that counts. And then also I wanted to, back to the name thing that Natalie asked, I wanted to make sure that the names were very, um, had enough variety, even though the majority of the people in the book were white, very white, bland looking people. I didn't want all their names to be too similar. I do appreciate how gracious you guys all are with me having to take a break every so often and manage my children. Um, what's I going to say? Oh, um, yeah, I didn't, even though like everyone was born in the 80s, like this book took place in the late 90s, I didn't want everyone <laughs> to um, be too similar. You can actually buy it on um, Amazon. I will put in a link for you. Um, I only had the links saved on my phone, not on my computer. So give me one moment, please. So this link right here is going to have um, a link to all my books, but only there's only one right now anyway, but it's going to have the ebook and then the paperback format. The ebook is $3.99 and the paperback is $9.99. And later on today or possibly tomorrow, I will be doing a I'll be announcing it on Instagram, which one of my followers over on Instagram 
won a signed paperback copy. I did a uh, like the week leading up to the release. Um, every time that I did a post regarding my book coming out, any time that someone liked, comment, or shared it in my story or in their story, um, uh, I, they would be entered into a drawing for a chance to win a free signed copy of the paperback. Um, it was really, I didn't really have a marketing plan for this book, so it was interesting to see what would work and not work. I do, I did realize that, I mean, I do have a good following here on YouTube, not like thousands of people. I think right now up to like 93 followers. Can you buy a signed copy? Yes, you will be able to buy a signed copy. Hold on one second, please. Again. Yes. So, yes, you'll be able to buy a signed copy. Um, I just haven't figured out that process yet. But when I do figure out that process, I'll be sharing it on YouTube here and also on Instagram and my Facebook, my Facebook author page. Um, yeah, I have a personal Facebook, but I'm trying to put all of my... I'm going to try to put all of my... Um, author related stuff on one page on Facebook instead of all over the place, if that makes sense. I mean, I have a blog that I write on, I have my Instagram and I have YouTube and Twitter, but really I use Twitter to share my blog stuff. Thanks, Devin. Appreciate that. And thank you, Molly. I appreciate that too. The cover, I think, took me a month to figure out or this and finally, like, come to a cover that I liked that really showed kind of um, showed the theme as well as as well as um, a cover that would look good on an ebook and also printed. So that was hard, too. I don't know if you know this about me, but I am just a tad little bit indecisive about things. So, coming to a decision and sticking with my decision was really hard. And then plus, once you stick a... <laughs> you can just find me, you can just find anyone anywhere, Devin, can't you?
Appreciate it, Devin. You know, in the future, I do plan on getting a domain for in my own website instead of going through like blah, 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 wordpress.com or blogspot.com or whatever.com. <laughs> um, but I can't use, if I do a something, if I do stephaniewitson.com, I can't do that because there's another author out there. Um, her name is Stephanie Kree Switson and she does like historical novels. And she already has one that's is stephaniewitson.com. I agree, Bonnie. I agree. Awesome. Doesn't matter who's streaming it in. If someone's book is talked about, or the blog, or a video, or someone's. I'm pretty sure if you pretty sure if you knew anyone's birthday, he'd probably be saying like "Happy birthday, to everybody!" Too. So, I think it's pretty cool that he is that supportive. And I went over to Devin's channel yesterday or the day before, um, to make one to make sure I was subscribed to him, which I which. Um. I was surprised to find out that he doesn't have any content. I just thought as active as he is, he would have some content. He is subscribed to a load of channels. That's for sure. But other than that, he isn't like there's, I just thought there'd be a video or something. I think it's pretty awesome that he is as supportive as he is to everybody out there. <sighs> No videos yet, maybe in the future. All right. chapter was the hardest to write. Okay. I'm going to say, hold on, let me find the chapter. I think chapter eight was the longest. I got you, Molly. I understand your uh, your your typo speech there. It's fine. That's a lot of channels. No wonder you were mentioning how you were like in seven different streams in one day at the same time. All right. So the hardest chapter to write was chapter eight, and it um. I think it was the hardest chapter to write because there was a lot of, I th I'd say it was a turning point chapter. There was a lot of description in there and there was a lot of um, reference to violence in that chapter. So I think that's why it was hard to write. Um, let's see here. What chapter is your favorite? Um, 
I think my favorite chapter to write was chapter... I think chapter seven, because it talks about my sis, it talks about, um, it talks about a cat that the main character's sister had to get out from underneath the shed, and the grandma was like, damn it, get that, get in the car, it's just a, it's, it's just a damn cat. And I just, I, I found it an amusing, funny chapter to write, mainly because I could totally picture any grandma saying that. <laughs> and then, of course, I think, um... And then my second favorite chapter to write was the last chapter, mainly because it was the end. I actually could type the end. I was finally finished my book. Although I probably could have kept on writing for like pages and pages and chapters and chapters more. But at one point you got to say the book is done. This is a good stop. It's a good place to stop. If you keep on writing and writing and writing. And editing and editing and editing and changing things and never being happy with it. And eventually, it's just going to come out as a black painting mess. You know, like artists, or when you're like in school painting or you're painting anything, you're trying to add more color to it, more color, more color, and more color. And all of a sudden, it's just a big collaborate glob of like brown and black <clears throat> painting all swirled together. So, even though I probably could have added like, probably like, 10 more chapters to the story. Thank you. Thank you. No. So this is a funny question. So I got into the end. I edited it. I let other people read it. I, I contributed their thoughts and opinions and ideas into my story. I added more feeling to my story. I added more of this inner dialogue, internal dialogue. Then it got to a point where I was like, well, I'm going to leave it where it is. And I'm going to publish it on like November 15th. And then um, the kids were like, what? how'd your book come along? How'd your book come along? Well, it's done. And they were all like, well, can you buy it? Yeah. I said, no, I'm going to wait. Why are you going to wait? They say, because I want to wait. I don't know. I had it stuck in my head. I didn't. I just wanted to wait. I wanted to like, relax, calm down. I wanted to like be in the middle of November for whatever reason. On your butt. Um, but then my three children decided to say, publish it, publish it, publish it. Like over and over and over and over again. They kept on saying, you should publish it and jumping up and down. So I said, fine. But, yes, Molly is right. If it wasn't for my husband, Jesse, I never would have... I never would have moved from it being in my head to being on words to being out where anybody could read it. I... You know, there's days that he... There's, there's plenty of evenings where he comes out, comes home from work, and then he hangs out with the kids or like on Saturday like on Saturdays I'll sequester myself in my room for like three, four hours so I can write or do live stream or brainstorm. And he is an excellent sounding board. Um 
actually um, told me about this idea that one of his English teachers told him about. Or if you want to make it more interesting, start a sentence with an ing word like walking towards the door. Um, Bethany was a here. I'll read a sentence that starts with the ing word. Hmm. I don't know. Like he just had an idea. Like if a sentence starts with an ing word, it is more interesting. But now that I said that, I can't find anywhere. Like during the uh, early spring of 1993, blah, 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 or um, walking out the front door instead of I walked. I walked out the front door, it'd be like walking out the front door. Let me see here. Let's see, let's see. Hmm. So instead of saying something like I uh, we waited for hours to depart from the plane, I wrote waiting for what seemed like hours to depart from the plane, followed by making her way out of the bustling airport, made the time move like molasses. So instead of say, uh, saying all that in past tense, the beginning, the, the first word is the action, like moving word. So that way um, it's not as, not, so it's a little bit more interesting. Or like we managed to untangle ourselves from the mess of whatever had fallen on top of us in the vehicle, managing to untangle ourselves. So it just so has a, um, it's a little bit more, of movement and action than otherwise not. And, you know, it's always been on my bucket list to be a paid published author. So even if I had only sold one single copy of my book, I would have accomplished my goal. But the fact that Let's see here. Let's go back that five. Um, ebooks for pre-order is excellent. It's about way better than I could have hoped for at this point in time. But I did learn a lot of things while I was writing and editing this book. Yes, you can get it. <laughs> you can get it on a Kindle. Yeah, you can get it on a Kindle. You, so you can go to Amazon and get a paperback. You can get it on um, Kindle as well. And then I use, I'm using this other company called Draft Digital. And they are like a third party company that releases my ebook version everywhere. They can even do Amazon for me, but I decided just to do Amazon since I was doing Amazon paper book. And they're in the process of publishing it 
to a lot of places. Right now you can get it on Kobo, Apple Books, Scribd, and then a few other um, places that are not in the United States that are in like Italy and Germany. And then eventually it will be um, available through Hoopla, Overdrive, Biblioteca, 24 Symbols, and Barnes and & Noble. But I've heard that Barnes & Noble takes a really long time for you to... Um, for the, it to be available on Barnes & Noble. But let me um, pop the link down below. That's fine. She's not mean to the cat. Let me post a link on All right. There we go. Okay. So this link right here is is a books to read account so you can click on that link and then it'll show you anywhere that the book is available ebook version through them other than amazon kindle and right now um it's available like apple books kobo scribd and then a few other places that are um, not in this not in the united states but now it's available in like six other places. So pretty much any way, any time. Germany, Italy, and France. It's available in those areas as well. Um, so regardless if you want to do paperback or ebook version, I think I've got you guys all covered. That's okay. I'm all right answering again for anyone that missed it the first time around. Totally fine. And <laughs> yes, I homeschool three kids. I have a home. I wrote a book. Shows anything is possible when you put your mind to it. Well, well, Molly, I have to say the same thing for you. You have accomplished a lot as well and you've gone through things too so only just empty it okay don't play with it okay so yeah i actually have purchased a um, book box planner planner from Mandy Lynn and I'm going to use that to help promote and <laughs> I am starting a new book it is going to be a sequel to the first to the book that I just released today I've already have it um outlined on index cards and uh, I'm just going to go through and make sure the order is correct. And then I have plans. The second book is going to be 27 chapters long. So this first book, I'd say, was only 17 chapters long, 56,000 words. I think the second book is going to be closer to 75 to 85,000 words. And I already have a name for the second book. I'm calling it Project Storm. <laughs> I think it's a fun name. <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. Appreciate that. I've never actually participated in NaNoWriMo before. I've done the um, the two camps this year. Did not I, in a the April camp? I wanted to write 30,000 words. I wrote like 28,962, so pretty damn close. Um, well, the first book, um, <clears throat> so the first book, I didn't really decide on how many chapters the first book was going to be. I just wrote until I thought I was a good 
um, content for the chapter or good length for a chapter. Because some of my chapters in um, Tears, of Four, Tears of Yesterday are like four pages long. Some of them are like 15 pages long. It kind of just depends. Hannah, put that down. And so I kind of just decided the second book was going to be 27 chapters because the first book is 19 chapters. And the longest chapter is chapter eight. And it's 56,000 words. And it goes from... From 1992 to 1999, so that's like seven years. But the second book, I've already, I already know it's going to go from 1999 to 2007, and um, it's going to have a little bit more adult themes in it than the first one did. So I feel like it's going to have more content to it. <laughs> um so that's why i feel like this and i want the chapters to be a little bit longer and a little bit more detailed so i feel that's why i feel like the second book is going to be longer at least thirty thousand words longer so i'm hoping 27 chapters because i know what's i know the things that are going to happen and even though some of them are just like, let's see. Like one of the cards is the main character's um, stepsister is getting married. So that one, even though it's one card, the whole like getting a wedding together is going to take more than like a page or two or like five pages. So I feel like that's going to be a link that's going to have a good chunk of the book in it too. Bonnie says you did a little over 30k last November, hoping to hit the 50k this year. I would be happy if I did 50k in November because that's going to be over half of my rough draft done. Okay, titles. So I was just talking to the kids yesterday, I think, about how I picked my title. So when I was like um, 16, no, 17, 18, 19, somewhere in there, years old, there was this book series I really liked by V.C. Andrews, and I still like it. Um, it was called the um, the Doppelganger Doppel Doppelganger series, um, but the first book is Flowers in the Attic. Flowers in the Attic. Petals on the Wind. Let there be thorns. Seeds of Yesterday. So I. I always imagine like my book that I would be writing would be the first in the series, um, kind of like a family drama, like following this family over generations, like it is on this one. And so that's how I came up with the first title, The Tears of Yesterday. <coughs> and I kind of want it to be, <coughs> excuse me, um, like a trilogy, so or at least a, a, a second book. Uh, so when I first picked Tears of Yesterday when I was like 19 years old that's when I picked the title of the book I just released um, I knew that the book was going to be sad I knew that the book was going to have lots of sadness and bad things in it and and I knew it was going to be the main characters like past like in her past so that's how I picked Tears of Yesterday um, and I think I'm going to go with Storms of Today, and then, like, it's something of tomorrow that's, like, more happier, like, tears, storm, and then another, like, one word happy thing for the third book. And I know, so when I picked Tears of Yesterday, I didn't think to, like, research and Google and see if the, there's other books, but there's, like, lots of, like, books on Amazon there, Yesterday's Tears, or, or... Um, there's a series called Tears of Yesterday. So, but then I looked on Amazon and online, other places, and there's no book called Storms of Today. So, that means that when people click in Storms of Today for search, it'll come up with my book and not other random books that are not mine. Um, so, my 
just a little bit um, backstory. My book that I'm releasing, I took inspiration from things that actually happened in my life, but I wouldn't say it's 100% factual account. Um, like, there's certain things in the book that actually happened to me or around me, and yeah. Um, but then, like, the second and third book is going to be more totally fictionalized and not based on my life, not really. I wouldn't say the book is, like, 100% the autobiographical thing. But I, I would say that it is inspired from things that happened. Thanks, Haley. Hi, I'm glad you made it. Thank you. We'll just sit here um, chatting about the book. Um, people are asking me questions about things like, mm, you know, Renee asked me how many chapters are in the book. Someone asked how to pick your titles. Why did you publish it? Um, what do your kids think of it? Things like that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a tickle in my throat. Hold on. I'll be right back, guys. I'm back. Hello, everybody. Okay. So I did order author copies of my book. Because I, I want to have a copy of my own to keep for myself. And then I ordered another. Uh, so I think I ordered eight. Because one for myself. One to give away in the giveaway. And I'll be posting the winners of that later tonight or tomorrow. And then I also, like, on my bowling league. I bowl Monday nights. Uh A few people wanted to buy a book for me and not have to go through Amazon. Hmm. What is my favorite coffee flavor? Let me see. Okay, so my favorite coffee blend, um, there's a really cool um, local person in California that blends um, coffee and I get it sent to me. And um, today I'm drinking Colombian South or Colombian S, um, deep grind, medium roast. Hey. Oh, and then there's Snickerdoodle on coffee creamer in it. What was it like going live for the first time? It was nerve wracking, that's for sure. It was definitely nerve wracking the first time I went um, live on YouTube. Um, 
And I don't think the first time I went live on YouTube on my writer channel, I'd already done a live like chat live stream thing on my other YouTube channel when it was like talking about mine and my husband, like moving into the RV and stuff like that. So it was, it was, it was a little, little, I was a little nervous the first time I went live by myself. It definitely helps. It definitely helps um, to have someone else on screen with you. Um, so you're co-hosting with someone the first time or two to get used to it. Um, but I mean, if you just want to go live and like talk for five minutes and do like a 20 minute sprint and five minutes, 20 minute sprint, that way you don't have to talk as much. You can just be more sprinting than talking. Um, what or who inspired you to become a writer? So I was an early reader. Like I went to the kindergarten and I came home and I said, mom, I already know how to read. And she's like, well, the, the, you know, that's the kindergarten's job. So she's learning how to read. And so just, you know, maybe you could be a helper to everyone else in the class. And, um, and so I was an early reader. I always liked to read. I um, always liked to write. I journaled all the time. And then I remember Mrs. Anderson at my high school in Portland, Reno High School, or not Reno, <laughs> um, Roosevelt High School in Portland said that um, I had a way with words and she encouraged me to keep writing. So I think if it wasn't for her encouraging me to keep writing, I might not have actually gone through with it. Okay, so Mrs. Anderson at Roosevelt High School inspired me and said, you should keep writing. So I did. And she's the one that I first wrote the, um, a version of my story. Like, that's the whole thing. I think I maybe wrote like five pages or something on a computer. And then I did it for class. And she's the one that grounded into my head, show, don't tell, show, don't tell, over and over and over and over and over again. So I had that cursing through my brain whenever I write things. Hey, Kat, how are you feeling today? I know that you weren't feeling really well yesterday. Better, still nauseous. Oh yeah, the test. I hope it's just like a really bad stomach bug and it's not like anything more serious than that. That's okay, Nikki. I am um, often just to let um, streams run and I listen. I don't always type stuff in there. I feel bad because then people don't know I'm in there, but I have to multitask a lot around here, as you can see. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. So if anybody wants to find me on the uh, Vanarimo and be my buddy. I am gonna. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna put my thing in here. So that is my um, profile on the Nanorimo. Oh, I missed it. I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to go onto your channel and find it again.
Yes. It, this was my first book ever. So, um, saying a little bit ago, I mean, the writing process and the editing, because I've edited books for other authors before that are out in, for general public to read. Um, what was I going to say? This, uh, so this is the first one I actually wrote from beginning to end and published myself. Um, I do realize through it all that I'm going to have to start like promoting and talking about my second book earlier than a month before release. I'm going to have to do more marketing and probably make a newsletter or something. All right. So Devin is Dev 75. Okay. Ah. Okay. And Cat, do you mind if I um send you a Request on the Nano website. And the IDIS is up to yours, Devin. Three boys. Oh, I have one boy. And there's things I thought I would never have to say to my children ever. Like, can you get your hand out of your pants while you're sitting next to your sister? No, we don't get your butt. And then we have to poop on the, on the wall. And no, you have to pee into the toilet. Or, hey, is your jeans a little tight? Do you need bigger pants? <laughs> Things like that. Cool. Uh, Renee, I just sent you a request on the Nano website as well. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. So this is what it looks like. Thanks, Seven. To the rescue again. Yeah, the first time I um, searched for Devin, it wouldn't come up, and I had to reload the page a second time. Yeah, I agree. It's a little bit glitchy. And they did more updates to it, too, I saw from, from when I was doing it during camp.
very glitchy. All right, I accepted everyone's uh, buddy request on there. Now I'll just have to remember to update my set every day. So, <laughs> we've just been chatting for an hour. Does anybody want to do any uh, working sprints? Or are we okay with just chatting more? I'm okay with either. Oh, so just let me know what you guys want to do. I've been kind of taking it easy a little bit, like not writing every day. I've been working on my outline and working, which is new to me because my first book, Kevin, he's on here. Hold on. Well, he'll probably beat me to it anyway, but. Doing housework, reading, intermittent YouTube debate, later writing for me today. Yeah, Mondays, I don't typically do a lot of... Ilana, can you not do that? I don't want it to break. What? I was talking to your sister, not you. She knows. Um... So typically Mondays, um, we don't normally, I don't normally do any writing on Mondays, typically. Um, typically we have schoolwork on Monday for like three to four hours and then we'll have an early dinner and then we'll go bowling and um, desperately try to beat my husband with a 200 or higher. It's never gonna happen. It came out of his mom's vagina bowling, so whatever. Uh -huh. Um, and then uh, come home, go to bed, and then Tuesday morning we get up early and uh, my husband's on staff at the church we go to and the next time out over. So the last couple of Tuesdays we've been doing school for an hour before, while he's in the meeting and then I do a Bible study and then their two kids do Bible school class. Good with both chatting and her sprints. Got lots of work reading, waiting. All right, we like the producers. We like the not seen, but always there. We're doing virtual school and writing on my outline later, trying to decide when I'm wanting to do it live. Well, um, do you, would you, do you want to do like a chatty live? Do you want to do like a working sprint live? Um, 
you just do one hour or two hours. Those are some things to think about. Yeah, so when I was like 13, 14 years old, uh, my grandma, her daughter um, owned a bowling alley on, in, on the Oregon coast, and I learned how to bowl there. And my grandma and her twin sister, they were both left-handed, and I didn't think anything of it until flash forward like three, four years ago when I was four or five years ago when I was first bowling with my now husband and everyone's like his family's like you're just letting go of it like you're left-handed bowler but I was bowling with my right hand and I was like oh well maybe it's because the left-handed bowlers taught me to bowl um which funny story is so I bowled for a while like a year and then I bowled in the league and the first year in the league I there was just a week where Jackson off the table there's a week where um, we're shorter teams, so we're bowling against nobody. But that was the day that I bowled a 201, my highest game ever. And my dumb, stupid husband, he had a bowl 203 and beat me with a 203. I'm like, really? So my goal since then has been to get beat him with a 200 or higher, and then get the scorecard, blow it up into like a poster size or 8 by 10, and then the caption is going gonna, gonna to be to his dad, and the caption is going to say. Hannah, can you put those up so the cat doesn't eat them? Or play with them somewhere else? Uh, this caption is going to say, you suck as a teacher, do better. <laughs> um, yeah. But then the second year... Uh, and then, then another year, and then, I think it was the second year I did bowling, I bowled like two weeks, and then my stupid doctor, who's not my doctor anymore, was like, oh, I think your right shoulder hurts because of bowling. I'm like, really? It's not because I cracked my collarbone 10 years ago? Oh, no, it's from bowling. I'm like, okay, whatever. So she told me to stop bowling, which I did. Technically, because then I switched to my left hand bowling, and that was really hard. Like I couldn't like just walk up to the. I could, I had to. It was. I had to think about a lot of different things, aspects of switching from my right hand to my left hand. But then this past year, I switched back to my right hand. But then the bowling only closed down in March or April or something, and then only opened back up this um this past summer. And now we're on league again. Which, I mean, we have to wear a mask, but because, like, when you bowl, both people on both, like, when you bowl, there's a lane next to you. The person on the right hand side um, goes first, and then the left hand side. So, people aren't bowling at the exact same time, which helps with the social distancing thing. So, unless you're, like, eating or drinking or actually walking up with your bowling ball bowling, you have to wear your mask. Or if you're walking to the bowling alley, you have to wear your mask. So, there's that. I thought it would be a little hard, but it's not that hard. To bowl and be active with a mask on. My mother worked at an alley, so I began bowling and did the league growing up. Eventually worked there until I had my first child. And the bowling alley that I bowl at now, last two years ago, I worked there for about six months, and then my mother-in-law died, and I missed the work, and they're like, hmm, well, they're coming in, but come bowl, but don't work anymore, because you got stuff going on, so I lost my job, because my mother-in-law died, which is stupid and retarded, but that's the way it is. Oh, 
also, so a few of you know this, but I also have a second YouTube channel, and I made that one before I did the writing channel. That one was me kind of being like living in an RV and doing homeschool in an RV because we live in a travel trailer. And then last summer I did summer for last video traveling, saw the Grand Canyon and things like that. Um, so I was just one. I was kind of thinking about just combining both content into one. Because I'm still, I still talk about living in an RV sometimes. I mean, shoot, I'm sitting in my bedroom in my RV filming. So I was thinking maybe um, taking all those channels, all those videos from my travel channel and putting on this channel and then just putting them like in a playlist of travel related videos or homeschool videos or whatnot. Um, simply because I don't, I mean, the, vid, the, the travel videos are doing really well over there, but I only have. 26 subscribers and I have 94 over here 94 to 96 because I keep on going up and down as YouTube takes them away and adds them back so what do you guys think about me just putting both types of content onto one YouTube channel and then both types of content onto one Instagram channel I mean I was thinking of doing it and then with the videos that are been over on the writer channel or the travel channel for a while. Jackson, stop laying on the table. I could, you know, just film a new intro like this is from, you know, May of whatever year. And this is what was going on here. And doing it that way. Only because I did like this 33 second video on my travel channel and is like the most watched video of all of my channel, all of my videos on both channels. It's insane. It was literally like a 30 second video of how to clean up, uh, clean out the heater vents in our travel trailer. So we have a heater vent. I'm going through the middle of the tra trailer and they're in floor vents. But like in a house, if stuff goes down the vent, it goes down into the heater system. But ours has like a catch all. So you just have to unscrew the um, screws, pop off the heater vent, and then scoop it out and put it back down. So right now, I yesterday I moved one, and it was my very first, other than in my introduction what my travel channel was about, it was my very first travel, or very first um, video, it was a, like a campground review video. Nay says, that's what I'm wanting to do, just vlogs in my life, mom related with writing aspects as well. You should totally do that. Uh, you know, I've tried keeping my brighter life separate from my mom and kids, mom and parent and other personal life, but really, it's really hard when there's kids around me all the time. Um, and then even on my Instagram channel, on my other cha Instagram channel, it's hard to talk about stuff without mentioning my book and vice versa on my writer channel. So that's what I'm thinking of trying to combine the two. I mean, I have a lot of followers on my other Instagram channel, but they're all like RV related followers. So I'm going to keep on like posting my stories. Hey, check out my other channel. This one's going to go away soon. This one's going to go away soon. And then just do it all on one. I think it'll be easier, less notifications. From where? She can it. It's her pencil, Jackson. Jackson, stop. Should I start singing? Then stop. <sighs> yeah, so on my travel channel, all of my travel videos are shot in the vlog style. Like I would be holding the camera on my phone because I had an iPhone back then. I don't anymore. But I would um, I'd just be talking as we're like, we're in the Grand Canyon or like camping or like going this place or traveling on the road or being stuck in Las Vegas traffic for nine freaking hours because we went through Las Vegas at the wrong time of year. <laughs> um, how do you make a video talking about my trilogy without giving too much away? Well, I mean, is there like... That's a hard question. 
know, maybe just say this is my trilogy. It centers around, for I'm going to give you an example. Like, my trilogy named the three books of creation is all about how Elena finds out a secret from her past. And the secret from her past changes how she views things in her world around her. Follow her along in these three books as she discovers what this secret really means to her and and something like that. I don't know. That's what I have off the top of my head. I've never actually written a trilogy. Um, and what if, like, do you are you definitely for sure it's going to be a trilogy? What if you just, like, did a video about your first book and then do your second book once it's starting to be written? That sort of thing. But, like, is it centered around one person? Is it centered around, like, a couple of people? Maybe talk about that main character a little bit without, like, giving... Like, um, let's say... Let's take Superman, like, you know, he was born on another planet, and he and he came onto Earth. The end. Like, if you went on to say, came from another planet, and there was these people from Krypton or whatever came, and they wanted to destroy him, and then Lex Luthor came in the mix. I want to give every little thing just, like, a very basic plot line, a plot from the main character and what happens. But I could be wrong. Does anybody else have any other suggestions for Nicole? Um, Renee says you could do a video talking about your cast in your books and not reveal the plot, but just talk about them as characters. You could also, like, um, make picture collages of what you think your character would look like and maybe different things about that character and then just talk about that character that sort of thing but yeah I like Renee's idea talking about your cast in the books and not and not revealing the plot I mean only a few people know like the plot twist in my book um but I feel like if I talked about my plot twist plot twist when talking about my book then what would be the point of people reading it so that they would know the plot twist that sort of thing All right, so that makes sense, she says. At first, at first, it's centered on Claire and how she figured out she's an empathetic spirit user, but the main chunk of it is about how... All right, I'm waiting for the second portion to come in. Might be lagging because it's Instagram. It's totally fine.
and I'll meet up soon and I'll make lunch, okay? All right? Okay. Um, Claire and her best friend Anna May, she meets in the academy and deal with a wish spelling curse to take control of them and be the revenge of the. Again. No, because in like 10 minutes I'm getting off and then it will be dinner lunchtime, okay? Okay? And then it's school time. Then stop complaining. Get revenge of the headmistress of the academy. So it, so at first it's centered around Claire and how she's figured out she's an empathetic spirit user, but the main chunk of it is about how Claire and her best friend animation needs an academy and deal with that with the witch of spelling curse take control of them to get revenge of the headmistress of the academy uh yeah maybe not give the how she's an empathetic spirit user um so maybe you could talk about revenge maybe not on who or, you know, yeah, I like Renee's idea, just talking about the basic plot blurb that you would put on the back of the book. That would be a good spot, good thing to do. Okay, guys, it's, I've been here for an hour and 37 minutes and counting, and my kids are getting hungry. I need to get them lunch, but it's been really fun chatting with you guys. So I'm going to definitely, definitely, I, yeah. All right, so I'm going to wrap this. Up. What's on the menu? I'm probably going to let them have top ramen and then probably like a half a turkey sandwich and some top ramen. Fill them up because the last time I gave them top ramen, they a lot and then they were hungry right away so probably turkey sandwiches and top ramen for them um my husband got me some gluten-free stuff in the freezer from the store last night and i'll do that okay so thank you everyone for um popping into my uh live stream chat Celebrating my release of my book, Tears of Yesterday. You can find Tears of Yesterday on Amazon and paperback and Kindle edition. You can also find it on Apple Books, Kobo, and several other ebook vendors. Thank you again for everyone's support. And I hope to have the announcement of the winner of my signed paperback um, posted this evening or tomorrow at the latest. All right. Everyone take care and have a good day. Bye.